Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before we talk to today's guest, who is uh, kind of a big deal in, uh, in real estate, passive income too, I would be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma, the automation specialist himself, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, are you excited about today's guest? Uh, I'm exhausted just hearing what all he's got going on. So yeah, I can't wait to hear, hear his story and to, uh, to get some nuggets from him. And uh, I can't wait for him to hear about our passive income model. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Says, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, before we talk to our guests, I just want to remind the listeners, today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Because let's face it, Scott, Scott, Todd, when you can press one button and put up 124 ads, you're dominating on Craigslist. And you know what? They got a stick too, right? And it's, that's what we teach in Posting Domination is how to, uh, how to defeat, that, defeat that one website Craigslist uh, algorithm. Maybe they'll buy Posting Domination like for everybody or buy yeah. it and take it off the market. There you go. There you go. Well, our guest today, I know, can take advantage of posting domination because it's Mark Ferguson from investformore.com. If you don't know about Mark, he is a professional land investor. He's done 120 flips. He's currently working on 16 flips. He's a real estate agent with a team of 10. Mark Ferguson, you're a big deal. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Hey, great to be here, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. So, Mark, how does Mark Ferguson start as a real estate agent and then go into the, the house flipping real estate star that you've become today? Well, I got my degree in finance back in 2001. Couldn't find a banking job, which is what I wanted. So I went and worked part-time for my dad as an agent and that turned into a career and he flipped houses once in a while. And I kind of fell in love with that part of the business and built that up and up and up and ended up buying him out eventually and taking it over and just trying to keep build it bigger and bigger. So what, what do you like about house flipping and what don't you like? Um, I like seeing the houses turn into something different. Um, you know, I like going there, making repairs, sometimes changing the floor plans a little bit, adding value. And I like to say I'm addicted to buying houses. I mean, I just, I am addicted to a good deal. I can't help um, buying more and more and more. And um, that's really the fun part of it, whether it's rentals, whether it's flips, I just love finding those great deals. And there's some very stressful parts of flipping as well. I mean, finding contractors is a constant struggle. Um, we're starting to build up our own crew because it's such a hassle finding good contractors. You find good ones, something happens to them, they stop working as hard, they start charging more. And, you know, there's just issues you have to deal with when you're doing that many flips. Like yesterday, you know, we had an inch and a half of rain in 15 minutes and one of the basements flooded. We had hail damage on other properties. And when you have that many flips going, you know, a storm becomes a really big deal trying to get everything taken care of and check on everything. Wow. Scott Todd, what do you think? Well, um, is it, is it the excitement of the deal that you like to hunt down? And then, like you said, that you like to, um, you, you like to see what it transforms to, right? But fl flipping is not that easy, right? Uh, so, so why is it that there's this, there's this draw in the marketplace to like these, to, to, to be a flipper, right? Like what, what, what's the draw? I think you're right. It's really, it's not that easy. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it as far as figuring costs, making repairs, getting your numbers right and finding deals. is not easy. And I think a lot of it's been glamorized by television. You know, you watch HGTV and the shows and they make it seem so simple. Like, Oh, you just pick up a deal and then you do some repairs and then maybe there's a hiccup or here, you know, here or there but you make $100,000 on a deal. And I think people see that and they think, you know, they can get it done on the weekends and it's not that difficult and they make all this money, but there's so much more to flipping that they don't understand. And that's really the difficult part and the stressful part. And that's why you see so many people jumping into it. 
plus, you know, you've got the big companies, you know, teaching people um, at their seminars and charging big money to try and glamorize flipping as well, which I think draws out a lot of people who think it's going to be simple and easy and just a, a weekend job. Right. So if you could do it all over again, Mark, what would you have done differently? Um, you know, in the beginning of my career, when I was an agent, I had very few goals. I was not really into self-help. I was kind of thought I could do it all myself. So I really started to see success when I started setting goals, going to conferences, really trying to work on myself. So one thing I would do earlier is just really network with people, learn from others, um, find people who could teach me. You know, I had my dad who helped me, but I didn't listen to him very much. I tried to do it on my own still. And uh, just listen to people more, um, be willing to you know, not think I could do it all myself. And then I would have bought rentals and properties much earlier. Cause you know, flipping is a great income, but it's more of a job than it really is investing. Because once you sell that house, you're done. So rentals, I think are really a key to that passive income building wealth where flipping is more of a job. Yeah. I mean, I, I learned that the hard way too. When I first started, I just flip, flip, flipped. And um, I, I really, you know, regret it to this day. It was one of my my biggest mistakes for sure. Um, if, if you're going to say that uh, you only could invest in one class of real estate right now in today's market, what would it be? Ooh, that's tough because um, I started out with single family rentals. That was what I really liked. But, you know, it was 2010 to 2015 was when I bought most of my rentals. When the market was down, rents were still pretty high. You can get amazing cash flow in my area. And I'm in Colorado where prices have gone from 110000 to 260000 for our median values. So it's been incredible appreciation and rents haven't gone up that much. So they're not really that great of a draw anymore. And what I've really moved into now is commercial. So I've started looking at um, kind of industrial flex space, shop space, warehouse conversions um, that are easier to manage. Kind of there's a lot of opportunity for growth and there's huge demand here right now for it. I like it. I like it. Um, what do you think, Scott? So is it, is it that you're, uh, again, like, are you chasing the deal or do you just, I mean, do you think that the market changes to where you, you have to do that to, sus to sustain? Like you, you know, the, the move to commercial, is that because you wanted to or really because the lack of like deal flow? I think it was both. So I think the lack of deal flow um, forced me to do a couple of things. And the first thing I did was look, look for a new market. So, you know, I went, I looked at Florida, I looked at some other markets where prices were much lower, rents were higher in comparison. Um, I even bought a property in Cleveland as a turnkey rental. And I really like those markets, but it's not easy to buy out of state, you know, when you're 2000 miles away. So I kind of put that off, put that off. And then all of a sudden, you know, my flipping business has been taking off and my project manager, Nikki's like, you know, we really need shop space. We need somewhere to store all our materials, all our stuff. I'm like, okay. And I started looking into shop space and commercial and I, I saw this opportunity there and I got really excited about it. You know, I saw this opportunity where you could take buildings that weren't managed well or were vacant or needed some kind of work and kind of like large, you know, multifamily apartment buildings, you could, you know, raise the rent, add value and really increase their value based on better management, better use of the property and kind of seeing the scale you could do with some of these properties um, was really exciting, got me completely out of my comfort zone and really challenged me. So it, it came from necessity, but it turned into something really exciting and really fun. How are you going to finance this stuff? Uh, that's the tricky part. So, <laughs> um, you know, there are local banks who will help me, but you know, they're doing 70% of the deal. They'll do some of the repairs, but then some of my own cash will be involved. Partners will be involved. I've got a couple of partners who are working with me now. Um, I actually have a deal under contract now that's 280,000 square feet. So that's a bit of a challenge and it needs a lot of work. It's been vacant for 13 years. So, um, you know, I'll probably be making more repairs than the property costs, but uh, yeah, definitely need partners. Um, 
contracting, you know, finding people can work on a place like that is a challenge completely different than flipping. And it's, it really has got me out of my comfort zone. It's been exciting and um, stressful at the same time, but it's fun. So there's a, uh, there's a, there's a building that's in my hometown. It's, um, it's one that growing up with, I drove past it on the interstate all the time. It's, it's a, like an office kind of a complex, you know, and uh, I keep driving by this thing and I, I tell my kids, I'm like that, I want to buy that building one day. I want to buy that building one day because it's not like, I remember when it was like newer, you know, like it was in better shape and it, it just, it, it needs some like, it, it needs repair. Okay. I even like have dubbed it. My last name is Todd. I've dubbed it Todd tower. Uh, you know, the, the kids kind of get a chuckle out of it, but deep down inside, I really think that there's an opportunity where do I find the money? Where do I find the partners that can help me put in that money so that I can make my Todd Tower dreams come true? Um, you know, most of my money comes from other investors, real estate investors in the area. And they've helped me, you know, they've invested money with me on my flips because they've seen me doing it for so long. They've seen my experience and they're familiar with real estate. So they're really easy to work with. You know, you don't have to do much convincing with them. If it's a good deal, they see it and they're like, okay, sure. Um, I can text one guy and say, Hey, I've got a new deal. Do you want to fund it? He's like, yeah, doesn't mean ask for the address anymore. So <laughs> it's just a matter of, you know, are you going to pay 10% interest or what are you going to pay on it? Um, so I think you start with, you know, people, you know, networking, those are the people you always start with it is who, you know, in the area. Um, a lot of times, you know, people have a lot more money than you think and just telling them about certain deals, telling them what you're doing. You know, we have to ask them sometimes. They'll start to inquire and get curious and then you can, you know, go deeper and deeper into what you're doing. And then besides that, my plan is to go for some of the bigger fish in my town. I know there's a couple of people doing some big developments. You know, my town's 100,000 people, so it's not huge, but um, there's one, you know, family that's bought 18 properties and a couple blocks. We're planning to do some major developments. Um, they, they put up a new hotel. I know who some of the investors are there. And then some of the investors who are investing with me are like, Hey, I've got a buddy. I've got a friend. I know someone. Um, my lawyer's like, Hey, I know someone. My CPA is like, Hey, I might know someone. You just got to network and talk to as many people as you can. So, you know, I know you've got the podcast. Um, you've got a forum. Um, you help people learn how to buy and sell real estate. What's the typical newbie question you get about flipping? Um, I think a lot of people ask me just, what do I do if I don't have any money? How do I get started? Um, and it's tough because it's not easy to flip without money. You know, there, there's some hard money lenders out there who will lend you a lot of the deal, but most likely not all of it. Um, if you can find partners, like we just talked about local people who can help you out, that's probably the best way to do it without money. But, um, what I tell people is, you know, one of the best ways to get started in real estate, whether it's flipping rental is to use your owner occupancy qualifications to buy a house, live there in a year or two and then sell it or rent it out. And you can buy with so much less money and it might take some time. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's one way to get started. And so many people I talk to, I'm like, have you talked to a lender? I'm like, no. I'm like, go talk to a lender. Even if you know your credit is horrible, they can help you fix it. They can tell you how bad it is. They can tell you if your debt to income ratio is bad. They can help you fix your own financial situation. So, I mean, even if you're wholesaling, even if you're doing, you know, off market stuff where you don't plan to use a loan yourself, at some point you may, and the sooner you can fix your own financial situation, the better off you'll be. I like it. I like it a lot. So let's talk about your dad for a second. What would you say was the biggest life lesson that you learned from your father, especially in, in you know, in real estate? Um, yeah. I mean, to do business the right way. So he was an agent. Well, he, he still is an agent, but he's retired. He doesn't do any deals anymore. He started in 78, right before I was born. And he was very well known in our community for a very long time. And the biggest thing he was known for was being honest and putting his clients above himself. And that got him so much repeat business. So many people respected him and so many people trusted him that, you know, at the end of his career, he didn't have to advertise, he didn't have to market. He had people coming to him. 
And you can use that same mentality in investing as well, where, you know, I haven't backed out of a contract in probably four years. You know, um, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I don't play games with inspections. I'm not trying to beat up sellers over nickels and dimes. I try and build my reputation as if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And now I have agents coming to me or sellers coming to me trying to give me deals because they know if they're in a tough situation, I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm going to make it right. I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great lesson about patience and trust, right, Scott? Yeah, that's and, right. I mean, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, they, they give themselves, let's say, 90 days to start establishing something in, in real estate. It's not enough time to, to build a track record. I mean, it takes patience. It takes grit. It takes, um, you know, a constant supply of, of energy and action and, and motivation. And, and Mark, what other adjectives would you add to that to, to say, okay, you want to be a successful uh, real estate investor. This is the recipe that you need to follow. I mean, patience is huge. Like you said, it takes, it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, even, even if you're trying to do, you know, there's so many people trying to sell wholesaling as, you know, get rich quick with no money involved. It takes a long time to set up a direct mail campaign. It takes a long time to find motivated sellers. Um, same thing with rental properties or fix and flipping. You've got to learn your market. You've got to, you know, find contractors, learn what repairs cost. There's so much that goes into it and being patient, um, persevering, really studying and educating yourself as well as just, you know, making sure you take action at the same time. You don't have to buy a house, but going out and seeing houses, talking to lenders, talking to CPAs, whatever you can do to get yourself out there. Uh, the sooner you start, the sooner ha it will happen. But like you said, it won't happen, you know, for a few months, at least sometimes much longer. All right. So you're going to have a dinner party, Mark, of your three favorite real estate investors or podcasters or, or whomever it may be, right? Who would you invite to dinner and what question would you ask them? All right. I would invite Jay Scott. Um, he's a well-known flipper, wrote a really good book, the book on flipping houses. So he is from the corporate world and super smart. I mean, really smart. So I would pick his brain over and over again, just about the mentality of how he um, runs his business because he does so many different things. He's got inventions and all kinds of stuff going on. So I just want to pick his mind on inventions. Um, I think even though they're one of my biggest competitors, Bigger Pockets is a great site and um, they do a really good job. Brandon Turner would be fun to have and talk to about, you know, he does a lot of great YouTube videos. He does a lot of great, um, you know, writing as well in his books. He's also an investor right now in today's market. You know, he's not one of those, you know, people who did things 20 years ago and, and, and still, you know, trying to teach people um, how to invest. So he would be a good one. And finally, I think, um, boy, I would say, well, of course you, but I can't count you because you've already got your own show. <laughs> <laughs> but um, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> I already had you on my show, so obviously I, I know. <laughs> um, boy, you know, Jay Henricks is someone who doesn't really have his own podcast or show or teachings, but he was someone on my sh um, podcast who was really, really good. Has done land development, developed timber, done hard money done land, you know, subdivision development is a broker, um, turnkey rentals, just did so many things in his career. I would want him to just pick his mind on business and, you know, how he's progressed through his career and from spot to spot to spot and just finding more and more opportunity. Yeah. I, I think that's, you know, those are, those are really good, uh, people to definitely have, uh, for dinner. Scott Todd. Who would I have for dinner? Well, what do you think, what do you think of his guests? <laughs> I, I like them. I think that, um, I, I think that um, the, the fact that you're not necessarily going after people that you can, um, you know, that, that are just in your circle there, the people that, are, that you want to learn from, 
and it sounds like you've got an, a distinguished list there of people based on intelligence and other other things. I think a lot of times people get caught up into the fact that you know they um, they're either afraid of somebody like like you said, Brandon. Maybe you and Brandon compete against each other. Hey, em, embrace the competitor, right? Because it's not like you've got to go there and and be. Um, you know, enemies or, or duking it out. The, the reality is, is that there's a, enough for everybody in the space. And I think that a lot of times people get confused by that. You know, they, they don't want to, they, they don't want to like their competitors, but there's no reason not to. Very true. And Brandon, I was on bigger pockets podcast. Brandon was on my podcast and sure. You know, we compete, but there's a lot you can learn from each other and working together is much better than, you know, <laughs> trying to, to choke each other out. So <laughs> Now, when you say you compete, I mean, is he, he's in Denver? Well, I just mean as far as our, our blogs and our space goes, um, w- Bigger Pockets was started in Denver. So we don't compete as investors. Okay. But we compete, you know, we both have podcasts. We both have, you know, real estate books that are, you know, in the same genre and, and do very well. So um, they're definitely bigger than I am. They have a lot, you know, bigger pop- populace. But uh, yeah, we're in the same space as far as that goes. Okay, great, great. Well, Mark, we're at that point now in the podcast where we're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Um, Yeah, I think my tip of the week is kind of what we were talking about earlier with your market. You know, there's a lot of people teaching, you know, how to buy rentals, how to flip, if you should buy multifamily or commercial, or if you should, you know, buy cheap houses, expensive houses, I think you have to look at your market. Real estate is so location specific and, you know, multifamily might not work in your market. Commercial might not work there. Single family homes might not work there, but there probably is some investment that will work in your market and just studying values and rents and opportunities will help you figure out what the best investment is there. So don't close your mind off to certain investments in your market. Um, really have an open mind to what may work. I like it. I like it. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Oh boy. All right, Mark, it's a book. All right. Uh, you've heard of Gene Simmons, right? The, the rocker? The rocker kiss. I want to rock and roll go. all night. Yeah, we got to take that mic away from you, I think. But it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, so he wrote a book, uh, 2014, called Me, Inc., And um, it's an interesting book, all right? Like he starts off like uh, most authors, like uh, the first half is his story, which is a very interesting story, uh, what you can learn from him. Uh, The second half is kind of him telling you how, you know, how you should build your own, uh, build your own brand, how you should build your own, you know, bring out the rock God in you as part of the the, uh, title. And, you know, look, there's, there's chapters of it that I just passed through because, you know, he, he talks about uh, w- women. You're going to start your own business. There's a whole chapter dedicated to women and to children. I passed through those because they didn't apply to me, and that's okay. But what I thought was fascinating was, was he does give you some real examples of the way that he thinks. And I think that that's what I enjoy. Anytime I can get into the mind of, of how someone who's more successful than I am thinks – then it kind of helps you to see like, man, there's, that's an interesting way of thinking. And then when you come across a pattern or something else in the future, you can see how maybe that would apply to you. So I found the book to be pretty fascinating. You guys should check it out. Wow. Very cool. Uh, You know, it's funny because when you see the guy, you don't think much of him. Um, I tell you. um, you He had that, he had that, he had that reality show. Yeah. And, um, he had some scandal and yeah, and he talked about, he talks about in the book, uh, he talks about, uh, being, being selfish and immature all, all of his life. And he kind of, you know, explains, kind of explains his why, why, why he felt like he was that way. But the guy is extremely intelligent, like extremely the stuff that he's put together and you wouldn't even realize here, here's an example. He, um, he was basically saying that. He, he found, he like uncovered or he discovered, I guess is the right word. He discovered Van Halen and he, he had created a uh, record, his own recording label. I think it was called Kiss Records at the time. 
and he signed Van Halen to, to a recording contract with Kiss Records. And his entire vision for Van Halen was that they would open on his tour, on the Kiss tour, they would, they would open in every city. And he would give them basically all of this publicity. He would help them to build this entire uh, fan base. And obviously he would benefit from a revenue stream. In addition to Kiss, he would uh, benefit from this revenue stream uh, of Van Halen, right? I mean, sound logical. And there was Passive a- income in the rock business. Yeah, there you go. So four, four uh, he had four members of Kiss and two of them did not approve. And he basically had to go and tear up the contract for Van Halen and say, I'm sorry, we can't do this. And uh, basically that was like almost towards the end of his, uh, his partnership with his first two or first, first bandmates, if you will. And, um, you know, it, it just kind of goes to show you like, here's, here is the ultimate business guy. I mean, you look at him as kind of a crazy rocker, but behind that crazy rocker is a true businessman who's really looking at passive income and you wouldn't believe all of the trademarks that he owns. I mean, like he owns so many trademarks and he's always looking for, for, um, for abilities to, to turn on passive income sources. Here's a trademark that he owns. You, you ever see like the cartoon of the, like a money bag with dollar signs on it? Yeah, that's his. <laughs> this guy's, a genius. You, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even know, man. You would not even know. All right, I I am definitely gonna have to read this book. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, I remember being a kid, and I didn't love the music as much as I loved the records and getting yeah. a toy with the records, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because I can't think of another another band. I mean, now now there's maybe a few of them, but you know, he really had an anonymity in a way. Yeah which, you know, most of these rock stars don't have, um, except for maybe Sia and those guys that, uh, yeah, I know those guys about. are. Yeah. 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 The, uh, I can't even think of it. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. Like Mark Ferguson, you know what we're talking about? I think so. Yeah. Uh, what was their song? Uh, all night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fun. Whatever. Yeah. 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 They're, bi- uh, yeah. they're big, but you don't know what they look like. Think. Now see, that's the other thing that Gene Simmons did is that he, he literally trademarked, their faces and you can't trademark a face. Okay. Like I can't trademark my face, but because of the paints, he could trademark the paint and he could trademark the faces. So the faces are trademarked. The logo is trademarked. This guy has trademarked everything. And, and in the book, he actually walks you through this whole, he, he, he literally, this is what he said. He said, look, I'm going to come up with an idea right now. Um, let's call it baby 101. He's like, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to um, check to see if the trademark is available. It is available. He's like, so I'm going to, I'm going to trademark it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just think about, okay, well, how can I do this? Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moms that don't really know what they're doing with their baby. You know, you have to take a driver's test, but you don't have to take a baby test. So maybe I'm going to provide content on, Hey, when your little baby is crying, screaming, maybe this is what it means. And we're going to have a TV show that teaches them how to do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a producer because I don't know anything about babies. I don't know anything about production. So I'm going to find a, I'm going to find a producer who's going to uh, help and they're going to basically take the concept and create it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to target and we're going to get target to, uh, to license from us uh, the baby 101 name for clothing and for baby stuff. And he's like, so then I'm going to get an income stream from that. I'm going to get the TV, the TV show is going to be the infomercial for the product line. And we're going to have formula and we're going to have all this other. So, I mean, this is the way this guy's mind is thinking. So after I get done with that section, I'm like, wow, wow. I go and I look up the trademark baby 101. Sure as heck, man. He just registered it in 2016. Okay. Gene Simmons companies own baby 101. Like <laughs> why is that not trademarked? Unbelievable. All so right, I trademarked well, the land geek real fast. I, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Mark Ferguson 
Um, check out his podcast, but go, the first place to start is invest for F O U R more M O R E.com. I have a link to the site. Um, and, uh, you know, learn all about, you know, real estate and, uh, and if you want to be a real estate agent, he's got information on there too. Mark Ferguson, are we good? I think so. I mean, one day I, I read a really, really good book too. I'll just, it's hard to say online, but <laughs> the subtle art of not giving an F. Oh, I love that book. That I just book finished it. Awesome. Yes. I, just, I just finished it. And I'll, I'll tell you what was interesting to me about that book is this guy's young. Yeah. Um, he's really young, like in his thirties young, but he's been through some stuff. And um, I, I thought there was some very ancient type of wisdom coming from a 30 year old. So it, it was, I, I thought the book was great. Yeah. Scott, what do you think? Oh, I thought it was a, <clears throat> I thought it was a fantastic book. I actually used it on a, uh, as a tip of the week. And, um, you know, I've had some people tell me like, Oh man, I'm surprised that you like that book because it was self-help. But at the same time, uh, I mean, I, I just saw like this, this, the way this guy thinks is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I laughed really the book. whole time. Through it's it, really whole... funny. It's, it's really funny. funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> Yeah, it was great. It was great. So um, great tip, Mark Ferguson. All right. Well, I, you know, I want to thank all the listeners. The only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Mark Ferguson from investformore.com is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Um, Scott, you ready? Oh boy. I'm doing this. Uh, okay. Let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. It just never gets better. <laughs> but Mark Ferguson laughed, so that's good. Hey, yep, you know, that was good. <laughs> All right, Mark. Well, best of luck. We'll, uh, you know, thanks again. And, um, my God, you've got a lot of books. You guys got to check out Mark Ferguson's books. This is great. Yeah. Fix and just, flip, build a rental property empire, how to change your mindset to achieve huge success. I think Mark just wrote a book during this podcast. <laughs> I have a new one coming out next week too. What, what is it? Um, the basics of buying and selling houses. So it's really for anybody. It doesn't have to be an investor. Just goes through everything you need to know that your agent lender title company may not tell you that you're just kind of trusting them on. So you know, you're getting a good deal, know how the process works and aren't getting ripped off. Very cool. All right. Thanks Mark Ferguson. Well, Scott Todd. Thank you. Take care. And uh, we'll see everybody next time.